Ladies and gentlemen, what's up, late? What? It's a little screen problem, but there we go. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Big Fight Feel channel. I think my screen is frozen on my part. Uh, hopefully, it's not on yours. It was working fine last time, so um, hopefully, we have no problems. But we are back here on the Big Fight Feel channel. It is Wednesday night. February 16th, 2021, 22, my apologies. Um, I got my friend Cameron Johnson here tonight on the channel, and our other friend, Wesley Williams, is at the Dynamite Show tonight at Nashville, Tennessee. Shout out to him. He'll be back on the channel on Friday. He'll be at a fantastic time um, uh, uh, on the, at, at the show tonight. And uh, Cam, how how are you doing? Really, really good show tonight. I thought from Nashville, Tennessee, with a lot of great build for Revolution. Uh, I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good, man. I thought Dynamite tonight. Well, I thought Dynamite tonight was really, really. I thought Dynamite what tonight was really good. Sets up a lot of set up a lot of good stuff for Revolution. So I'm looking forward to that. You know, so I'm looking forward to that, and also. Shout out to Mr. West who got to see Dark Elevation tonight. Shout out to you, Mr. West. Dude, he did get to see the Elevation. That was the bigger, that was the big attraction for the show tonight. Was seeing Elevation. That that that's right. He got to see Elevation, so that that was good. Um, but ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to really waste time. Um, we all know what the big what the big breaking news was uh yesterday morning i woke up i slept i slept in on tuesday decided you know what i'm gonna sleep in probably nothing is gonna happen and i wake up and i wake up to the news that cody rhodes and brandy rhodes but more importantly cody rhodes is a free agent him and tony khan could not could not come to terms on a new deal and both parties decided to just move on from each other. So Cody is now a free agent. He can go to WWE. He can be a movie star if he wants to. I don't know what he's going to do. But it's pretty shocking. Uh, one of the people who started this company has now left it. And... Um, the one thing that uh, I want to point out is people who uh, are saying that the, the same people who shit on Cody for, for winning so many matches, uh, winning a three-time TNT champion, all those people who shit on Cody are now the same people uh, who are saying that AEW is doomed without him when they have Brian Danielson, CM Punk, Hangman Page, Darby Allen. They have so many young guys to carry them for 10, 15 years. It's crazy, but is Cody going to be missed in AEW? For sure. I think he'll be missed, but I don't think there's no way AEW is doomed. They are set up for success for the next 10 to 15 years. Uh, there's no doubt about that. And, um, this man can literally go anywhere now. Um, if he decides to go to WWE, good for him. There's a lot of quality opponents for him over there, I guess. But uh, I wouldn't be shocked if he takes some time off, spends some time with his daughter. He's gotten so popular outside of wrestling. Maybe he wants to do a couple movies. I'm not so sure. But uh, I know it's a big topic. We're probably going to spend a lot of time on it. Um, so, Cam, if you want to give your explanation, take your time on it, the floor is yours on Cody Rhodes. First off, I just want to say this has been these past two days in the world of wrestling have been absolutely batshit crazy, man. I thought something else was going to happen. I thought something else was going to happen today, to be quite honest with you. I thought we were going to read the news of something else happened today. First, we have Steve Austin. Who might be first? We have Steve Austin, who might be coming back. Then on Tuesday, that that's the news that breaks Monday. Then on Tuesday, the news break that the news break that Cody 
It's gone from AEW. The news breaks that Cody's a free agent. He is gone from AEW. And by sources close to him, he is heading to, he's probably heading to WWE. So that was a major left turn there. I, so that was a major left turn there. I had to double check. Uh, I had to double check them because that was a major re- a left turn. I had to double check the uh, news when I got it. But man, this is a uh, this is big news, and this is uh, this is big news, man. I, I I always thought the first big AEW name who was going to defect, you know, who's going to go to WWE if that's where he goes, was going to be Chris Jericho. I thought it was going to be Jericho going. I thought it was going to be. I thought Jericho was going to be the first thing to go back, but Cody. Might be going back. It's just, I don't know what to make of this situation, bro. Uh, I have no idea what to make of this situation. I, I just wish Cody, you know, I, I just wish Cody and Brandy Rhodes the best. And you know, I just wish Cody and Brandy Rhodes the best. Uh, I don't think this is the end of AEW, but them losing Cody is a very big blow. But they'll be fine. It's a big blow, but they'll be fine. Also, also, Tony Khan, you need to hang that man Cody's jersey up in Daly's place, man. <laughs> y'all go back to Daly's place. Cody's jersey needs to be hanging up there. Because my y'all Cody's jersey needs to be hanging up there. Because just, my Lord, man, I was not expecting this at all. I was not expecting the news of Cody Rhodes being a free agent at all. I thought he was going to come to terms with AEW, but this is just... And he still might come to terms with AEW. This is just amazing. And for the people out there that think this is a work, I don't think this is a work. I think this is legitimate. No. Yeah. It, it wouldn't make sense that, you know, it wouldn't make sense to, you know, it wouldn't make sense to, you know, it, I think it would be very bad for the locker room. Unless all the locker room is in on it. I think it would be very bad for the locker room to not tell them that this is a work and to get them all, you know, to not tell them this is a work and to get them all you know, to get them all emotional and stuff like this, I think that would be very bad luck for tomorrow. So let's narrow in on it. I, I don't think it's a work. Yeah, I don't think it's a work because this has been hap- this has been going on for a long time. Um, between Cody Rhodes and AEW, where Cody even came out and said that um, he's on a handshake agreement with uh, Tony Khan and AEW, and that he wasn't working. He's working without a contract and. My guess is some of the some of the possibilities that both sides couldn't come together was a. Um, I guess Cody wasn't getting enough money, and and Cody, Tony Khan wanted to spend some money on some of the free agent talent, which uh, good on him because there's so many free agents out there, and uh, b. He lost all creative control. In the beginning of AEW, he had a lot. He had half the creative control with Tony Khan. And then as time came on, uh, he lost that control to Tony Khan. And Tony Khan, the boss, has all the control on what happens on the show. Uh, I'm guessing. What was that? Uh, I was just going to say, him losing uh, creative control to me, that's a big shock because it really did. Sam, you know, because it really did seem like that Cody was just, you know, that Cody was just allowed to pick who he, you know, that Cody was just allowed to pick who he viewed it with and where the story would dictate, you know, where the story would go. But at the end, Tony Khan would kind of like decide like the winner or losers. So, so him not having any creative control anymore in AEW, that surprises me. But if he's looking for creative control, I don't think, I, I'm just saying, I don't think it would be a smart move for him to then go back to WWE where he ain't going to have no creative control at all. Yep. I mean, if if he thinks he's getting creative control at WWE over Vince McMahon and uh, Bruce, um, I really think he has another thing coming for him. Now, there are rumors swirling around today that um, if Cody does indeed go back to WWE, uh, Vince McMahon is going to push him as a main event star. I won't believe it until I see it. That is a load of bullshit. But on the other hand, this is a big deal for WWE. And I, I don't mean to get, I'm going to 
to like not get on AEW real quick. Uh, I'm talking on the WWE side. This is a big deal for WWE if they get if they get the uh, their first main AEW star jumping ship over to their company. That's a big. If they get Cody Rhodes, that's a big deal, man. That's a that's a, it's a huge deal. It is. That's a very. It is. That's a very big deal. For it, it is. That's a very big deal for AEW. Now, I could also see. Now, I could also see this happening. You remember when AEW first started up in 2019? You remember when AEW first started up in 2019, and there were rumors that you know Randy Orton, you know, and I was in was like Randy Orton had a contract due. The Usos had a contract coming up. AJ Styles had a contract coming up, and at least with AJ and Orton. I know AJ Styles at least because I don't think AJ was going anywhere, but I know AJ at least entertained the idea of listening to Tony Khan because he was playing both sides against the other, trying to get the most money. Randy Orton, did, you know, Randy Orton did the exact same thing. Randy Orton basically admitted, and Randy Orton basically admitted, "Thanks Tony Khan, thanks to you, I got a fat money deal from WWE." Because Randy Orton, AJ, and the Usos weren't going anywhere. Do you think this? Do you think this? Could, do you think this could happen? Here with AEW and with AEW and WWE, where Cody is like, well, you know what? Where Cody's like, well, you know, Tony Khan doesn't want to give me the money that I think I'm worth. You know what? You know what? I'll, you know what? I'll entertain an offer from Vince and Bruce, and I'll come back to Tony Khan, and I'll see if Tony Khan's going to give me a big money offer to stay and give me, you know, give me back some of my creative control. Do you think he could be playing? AEW against WWE, like AJ Styles and like what Randy Orton did a couple years ago. Um, I mean, I could, I, I could see it happening. I, I probably could, but um, I don't, see, I don't see like anybody from WWE a big star jumping ship. But like, I don't think it's gonna happen. But what if somehow? Cody got a working relationship between both companies, and we see guys like Randy Orton on Dynamite. I don't, I don't think that's, I don't think that, I don't think that's a shot at LA. No, no just, I don't think so either. Uh, just imagine the possibilities. And I only ask that question because, and I only ask that question because with guys, you know, with contracts coming up like MJF and Wardlow, I don't think they're going to WWE at all. But I you at not. least know. I think in MJ, but you at least know, like with MJF, for example, you'd have to think MJF would at least play both sides against each other, trying to get more money, you know, trying to get, you know, trying to get more money from AEW, you know, trying to get more money from AEW by saying, you know what, I might go to WWE if the price is right, and that leads to Tony Khan striking like a big money office or something. I don't know. I'm just putting this out there because I was just thinking about what Orton and AJ did a couple years ago and how they got that money offers from WWE to stay, you know, how they got that money offers from WWE to stay, you know, to stay when AEW were interested and they're playing AEW and WWE against each other. I just started to think about that. Yeah, uh, but you so <laughs> see, here's the deal with MJF, okay? Don't you think that if he stays in a, he's a top star right now and he's going to be the world champion. Okay, no matter he'll he will be the world champion right after Adam Page. And he'll be a main event guy for ten years at least. Um do you really think he's gonna get the same in WWE? Now they could do it because it's a it's an AEW star and we wanna prove to AEW that you can leave there, come to WWE and be in the main event. I just think at the end of the day, I don't think I know Wardlow is staying. He say he says he wants to stay there for the rest of his life. I don't think there's a shot of him going to to WWE. But I think MJF will entertain the author. But I think in the back of his head, I think he knows that AEW. He's got a, he's got a main event spot for many many years. That's not guaranteed in WWE though. Yeah. So, I don't know, man. Final thing. Before we get into the show, um, number one, uh, AEW is going to be fine with Cody, right? They'll be fine without Cody. Yeah. It, it'll be a big blow, but they'll be fine. They'll be fine without Cody. It's like when Kawhi Leonard went to the Toronto. 
is I went Kawhi Leonard left Toronto for uh, the Clippers. That was a big blow for Toronto. But Toronto was fine. You know, that was a big blow for Toronto. But Toronto was fine. They didn't go back to the NBA Finals. But they, they were perfectly fine without him. They were perfectly fine without him, even though he did leave. He, they were perfectly fine without him. It's the same thing here. Cody's going to be a big blow, but they'll be fine. And finally, uh, before we get into tonight's show, Cody does jump ship, goes to WWE. Any main matches you want to see out of him in, in WWE? I think the one guy, I think the two people that stick out to me the most, obviously Roman Reigns, and the other one is Seth Rollins. Uh, let's see. Uh, you can do Cody and Roman, Cody and AJ. Cody and Edge, uh, Cody and Edge, Cody and KO, Cody and Seth, Cody and Drew. There's a lot of opponents for Cody to tangle up with there in WWE. He goes back, or I'm sorry, shall I say Stardust goes back to WWE. There's a lot of uh, opponents for Stardust when he goes back, if he goes back. Oh, God. Don't, don't, don't bring up Stardust. If, he, if he's back <laughs> and he's Stardust... Uh, his career is over. His career is over if he goes back to being Stardust. So, yeah. Big, big news-breaking topic in the in uh, in wrestling that we just had to talk about. So, um, at the end of the day, best of luck to Cody. Best of luck to Brandy. And uh, we just appreciate their time in AEW. So, without further ado, got that done. Uh, let's get into tonight's show. We had um, we had CM Punk standing, uh, sitting in the middle of the ring, and he had a box, and he said he was thinking of his his all time toughest matches, and he says one of the toughest matches is a steel cage, but he's won more. He's won. More steel cages, steel cage matches than he has lost. And he thinks that would be too easy because MJF could climb out of the cage. Wardlow can easily climb into the cage. So that's not good enough. And then he opens the box and he has a dog collar. And he says, You want, uh, uh, I need a Valentine to his uh, to his Roddy Piper. I need a Valentine. MJF, do you want to be my Valentine? And MJF comes out because uh, CM Punk calls him out. And MJF, uh, CM Punk says, uh, he he gave he showed him a picture. From many, many years ago, and it's the picture everybody shows on social media, the picture of CM Punk and MJF when he was a little kid. CM Punk said, this was just a normal Friday, and to MJF, it was one of the greatest days of his life. And on Sunday, March 6th, at Revolution, um, CM Punk said it will be just another Sunday for him and for MJF. It'll be the worst day of his life. And MJF couldn't usher out a word. He walked right to the back. And there we go. Revolution. It's set. CM Punk, MJF, in a dog collar match. Man, how can you, how, how can you not get goosebumps? What a fantastic opening segment how could you not get goosebumps during that segment my friend what a start to the show this wasn't oh my god this is an amazing segment this is an amazing promo by CM Punk I I am very much looking forward I I am very much looking forward to this doc holler match between CM Punk and you know between CM Punk and MJF this is this is going to be a bloody affair, and I cannot wait for it. It's going to be a bloody affair, and I can't wait. It's going to be so, oh, oh, my God, it's going to be so much fun. Mr. Collin, man, you get to see Punk and NJF in a dog collar match, man. Wow. 
Oh my nuts. god! Oh my god! Oh, this this match is this match is gonna be incredible. I can't wait for this. Dude, I cannot. You know what he's saying with uh, MJF's worst day of his life. It, it's gonna make it so much better when MJF wins this match. It's gonna feel so much better when the crowd is just in shock, and I'm in shock. That and not really gonna be, but I'm in shock when MJF beats CM Punk. Um, I'm expecting a. I'm expect. I'm expecting a bloodbath, dude. I'm very, very excited about this. I don't know if it's going to match up to the Brody Lee Cody Rhodes dog match. I mean, that was a amazing match. So we'll see, man. But man, I'm I'm excited for this. I I, I am very excited. Uh, any minute, any last minute thoughts on the uh, the segment? Uh, no last minute thoughts on it, man. I just I just can't wait for the match. Uh, Revolution, man. I thought this part, everything about this promo was great. I, I really enjoyed it. Yes, sir. So we got into the action. And the first match we saw this evening, uh, Brian Danielson against Lee Moriarty. And we've seen Lee Moriarty in the ring against CM Punk on an episode of Dynamite. And I will uh, kid you not that... Um, this was Lee's best match in AEW. Not even close, man. What a technical match it was. An absolute great match. So technical. And Lee Moriarty going to be a star in this company in a few years, man. Brian Danielson gets the years with the, the, the win with the triangle chokehold. Shows off flexing the muscles. And he gets the win over Lee Moriarty. You realize how he comes out of the heel tunnel as well. Brian, my man Daniel, since officially a heel, and I'm very excited about that. But before we get to the post-match segment, great match and a great showing for Lee Moriarty against a guy like Brian Danielson, Cam. Oh, yeah, man. This is an excellent... Oh, yeah, man. This is a great match here uh, between Danielson and Lee Moriarty. Uh, Lee Moriarty, uh, you know, we talk a lot about the pillars and I know we talk a lot about the pillars, and you know we talk a lot about uh, pillars in wrestling, the pillars of WWE, the pillars of AEW. Uh, Lee Moriarty is a pillar. Lee Moriarty is a pillar of this company. I mean, Lee Moriarty is a pillar. He is a pillar uh, of this company, man. This was an excellent match here between these guys here. Uh, and this, uh, and this is what I want to see from Brian Danielson in AEW, man. I want to see Brian Danielson and AEW work with these guys. I want to see him work with people like Wheeler Yuta. Lee. I want to see him work with people like Lee Moore, uh, with, uh, I want to see him work with people like uh, Lee Moriarty and Dan, uh, with, uh, Lee Moriarty and Wheeler Yuta and Danny Garcia. This is what I want to see from Daniel Bryan. These are from uh, Danielson. These are the people I want to see him in there with. And I really did. And I really enjoyed this. I thought this was a really good stuff, man. I thought this is an I thought this is an excellent match here. I thought this is an excellent match. And Lee already stock continues to rise in AEW because he's a pillar for this company for the next couple of years. He he is a pillar of this company for sure. Oh, he's gonna, he's going to be a player for sure, my friend. He he's got he's definitely going to be a player um, in AEW. But um, after this after the match. Uh, Danielson gets on the microphone and he says, tonight what you saw is me teaching Lee Moriarty violence. What I said I was going to teach him last week. And he says he knows John Moxley is backstage and he wants Moxley to come out. So Moxley comes out to a massive ovation. And he gets on the promo and he says that He's never beaten Brian Danielson in his life before. And how he came into AEW and everybody was intimidated of Danielson while he just wanted to get that one win that he never got over Brian Danielson. And he says, I thought of the offer. And there's not really a bad thing in that offer. And there's no reason for me to say no. But I'm not going to say yes right now because I can't work with someone until they bleed with me. So if he says yes, he doesn't say yes 
but he didn't say no. But basically what he's saying is we need to bleed together before we actually work together. So basically the match is happening between Moxley and Brian Danielson at Revolution. And honestly, dude, I would not be shocked if that is the match of the night on that card. That is going to be a show stealer. No doubt. Yeah, man. I, I, I agree with you, man. I agree with you, man. I am very much uh, uh, Danielson and uh, Moxley. Danielson and Moxley. Uh, that Danielson and Moxley. Oh, rock match of the night. That might be match of the year. That, oh, that yeah. might be a match of the year. Contender right there. I cannot wait for this, man. I, I cannot wait for this, man. And it looks like we're getting a fact, you know. I mean, it looks like that stable with Danielson and Mox is coming together, and I, I absolutely love it, man. I thought this was great stuff. Uh, I thought I thought this was a great promo between these guys, and I thought I, I thought that was a great line when Moxley said, "I." Well, I thought that was a great line when Moxley said, "I don't stand stand. I don't stand side by side with someone until I until we bleed." Took me until I bleed with them first. I thought that was such a great line, man. Great promo between uh, these guys. Uh, these guys are gonna go out there and they're gonna kill it at they're gonna kill it at Revolution. Uh, and this faction we're gonna get between Moxley and Danielson uh, is gonna be very intriguing. I can't wait for it. Do you actually think they're gonna have a faction together? I think there's a chance. I think there's a chance. I think what's more likely to happen is that Danielson gets the faction and you know and because you know Moxley kind of like a lone wolf, you know, because, you know, Moxley's kind of like a lone wolf. He works better on his own. Uh, you know, he had a, you know, he had that dynamic with Eddie King. You know, he had that dynamic with Eddie Kingston. But other than that, Moxley kind of works on his own. Uh, but I, I can definitely see this. I can definitely see him being a part of the faction. But I think what's more likely to happen is Danielson just gets the faction over these guys. Yeah, I agree. I think I don't know who's going to win at Revolution. But I, um, I think the feud continues, and I think they, I think they're gonna trick Moxley, and um, I think they're gonna trick Moxley, and um, it's gonna be Danielson's faction versus Mox, uh, John Moxley, uh, for a few months in AEW, which, which should be fun. Also, also, I would say this: I don't know. What his not compete look like? I don't know what his contractual status is, but we need to get William Regal as a part of this faction here. I don't know if I said I don't know if I said it on this stream, but I am all for, I am all for a diamond mine like faction where Brian Danielson is where Brian Danielson is the leader. He has the young lions, and William Regal is there as the mentor and like the managerial role. I, I think that'd be great. I don't know what his contractual status is, and I don't know what his non-compete looks like, but we need to get, find a way to get William Regal involved in this faction. Yo, you know what I read yesterday? I said, I, I read something about William Regal. Someone said, um, you know, with Cody leaving AEW, there's, a, there's an empty EVP spot open. What if, what, if, what if William Regal came into AEW and was an EVP? Well, I think that would be cool, man. Oh my god, I, I like it. I like it. Roll it. We, we need that to happen. I, I like that a lot, man. I like that a lot. We'll get William Regal in that EVP. Oh my god, I like to get Regal in that EVP spot, man. Either way, I think Regal needs to find his way over to AEW. <laughs> he needs to find I his agree. way over to AEW. He, he, he can't wrestle, obviously, but him coming over, being a manager or a general manager or an EVP it would be great for AEW I think it would be it would be phenomenal for AEW I think so um yeah really good stuff between Mox and Brian Danielson probably getting them in a match at Revolution uh speaking of Revolution we had a face of the Revolution qualifying match Max Caster versus Wardlow. And I'm going to tell you something right now. This is the loudest. Tonight was the loudest pop I've ever heard Wardlow receive 
when he started power bombing Max Caster, he was feeding the crowd's energy, three power bombs in a row to Max Caster. She put his foot on his chest. Crowd was going crazy for Wardlow, man. They are doing him phenomenal right now, man. He is super over. And when he turned, like we say it every time, when he turns on MJF, that is going to be a special moment, man. Beats Max oh. Caster, and he's in the face of the Revolution match. Great stuff. Yeah, man, this is absolute, yeah, man, this is great stuff tonight, man. Yeah, man, I, I, yeah, man, this is great. Uh, this is great shit, like man, great shit. Uh, great, you know, great shit between these guys. Warlow beats the piss out of Max Caster as he should. Uh, Max Caster got some offense in, but uh, but notice, notice how when Warlow was getting the shit beat out of him. Now, not not the shit beat out of him, excuse me, but well, I, but notice how when Warlow was getting jumped. By the acclaim. Sean Spears didn't do a damn thing about it, man. I, I, I like that, man. Just that little detail. I like that, man. Just that little detail there. Adding just that little detail there. Adding more wrinkles to the fa- adding more wrinkles to the fabric between MJ, uh, between War on MJF, man. And this is gonna be this is gonna be great, man, because I think Warlow's probably Warlow's pr- he's probably my pick. To win the uh, face the revolution ladder match, and when that happens, him beating the piss out of MJF and everybody in the Pinnacle, man, it, it is going to be great. It is going to be great. But I thought this was really good. Right here. You think he's going to win that ladder match? I got. Uh, I'm I, I'm going to see. I I got him. Be- I got it between either him and Keith Lee. The only reason why I said I think Wardlaw has a shot at winning if Keith Lee and you know over Keith Lee. It's because of what MJF said a couple months ago. Where MJF said, you know, where MJF said, as a part of your contract, any championship opportunities or any championships that you get go directly to me. Go directly to me. I, that's a detail there that I don't think AEW wants people to forget. And I, I think that's a detail there that, that I don't think AEW wants people to forget. And I think it was said for a specific reason. And I think it's for him probably. I think it's for Warlow probably winning that ladder match, and that is the catalyst for Warlow and for a Warlow beating the piss out of everybody. That's just me. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't really. It's it's early to predict matches for Revolution, but um, I think it would be. Um, I I would not have a problem if. Keith Lee won that ladder match and immediately won the TNT championship. I don't like when people come right into the company and win a title, but if they had Keith Lee come in, I would have no problem with Keith Lee taking the TNT title off of Sammy Guevara. I would not have a problem with that at all. No issue. I don't have an issue with it either. Yeah. So, who knows? It could happen. It could not. But, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a little break, and we're just going to advertise a special video for tomorrow with myself, Cameron Johnson, and Wesley Williams. For all you NBA fans out there, this weekend is the All-Star Game in Cleveland, Ohio, Saturday night, three-point contest and dunk contest, and Sunday night is the All-Star Game. Well, we're going to do a video tradition. For, uh, we're going to do a uh, sort of our all-star game selections tomorrow, but with AEW. That's right. Myself, Cameron Johnson, and Wesley Williams will be on here tomorrow uh, for your video upload tomorrow. And we will be doing our all-star selections AEW version. Also talking about a little bit of NBA in the first half of the season uh, going into the second half. That is all going to happen tomorrow here on the Big Fight Field channel. And Cam, my smile on your face. I can tell you're excited, dude. I can tell you're excited. Uh, I can't wait for it tomorrow, man. I can't wait for it tomorrow. This is going to be – I can't wait for it tomorrow. This is going to be absolutely awesome. And make sure you guys check it out on the Big Fight Field channel tomorrow, man. It is going to be can't miss. 
And actually, before we move on to this and continue with the show, Cam was actually the person who pitched this idea to me. And once I heard about it, I'm like, dude, that is a great idea. We all love basketball. We all love AEW. It just meshes well together. So you can credit Cam for this video idea. <laughs> so that'll be on tomorrow at the channel. Be sure to subscribe, all that. Let's continue with the show, shall we? We had the AEW World Champion. Uh, Adam Hangman Page came out with Tony Giovanni. And Adam Page could not even usher out a word as he was immediately interrupted by Adam Cole Bay Bay. He was interrupted by Adam Cole. Adam Cole came out to a big pop and he told Adam Page, you know, same thing was on, on Friday, how much he respects Hangman Page as a wrestler. He's one of the best wrestlers in the world. You know, there's no one I want to stand across the ring from instead of uh, Hangman Page. All that good stuff. And he says, one he's had his friendship. You can ask the Young Bucks that. Uh, you can even ask the Dark Order. Someone he hasn't been associated with uh, for months. Hasn't been associated with the Dark Order for a very long time. And Paige says, you know, I'm not the perfect person in this world, and not everybody wants to be my friend, but don't you have a problem with friendship as well? And that was a great line, going back to his friendship, the Bullet Club, Undisputed Era, and NXT. So I thought that was a great line from Hangman Page. Really enjoyed it. And then Adam says, Adam Cole says to Hangman, "Uh, this is nothing personal. And uh, when we when we fight for the world championship one day, it's going to be make the best man win. He shakes his hand. And I love. um, I love the little smirk he had on his face when he was walking up the ramp. And then he got attacked by, excuse me, he got attacked by Red Dragon. And he's got this big, he's got this big smile on his face and he comes in, attacks Hangman Page. Sorry, he attacks Hangman Page, security comes in to break it up, they can't do it. All the Dark Order come in, and they take it at 10. Preston Vance takes out security, and we get a face-off between Adam Cole and Red Dragon and the Dark Order. Very nice segment, basically confirming Revolution had your main event as Adam Cole and uh, Hangman Adam Page for the World Championship. Should be phenomenal, probably the match. I'm looking forward to the most on that Revolution card is Adam Cole and Hangman Page. Uh, those two are going to kill it. It's a match. Uh, big. Uh, it's a match that people have wanted to see for a long time, ever since they were in their ROH days. And, uh, yeah, man, very exciting stuff with this segment. It was very good. Mr. Johnson, your thoughts? But, but, see, but see, Mr. Joseph. I thought, and I was told this by <laughs> so many people, I thought Adam Cole was buried. I thought Adam Cole was buried after he lost to Orange Cassidy. I thought Adam Cole, I thought Adam Cole wasn't being used the right way by AW. I thought he was being treated as a mid card. I thought Adam Cole would, would be better off in WWE, that, 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 that's what I was told, Mr. Joseph. That, that's what I was told by the people of Twitter. Now, now the people of Twitter lied to me, Mr. Joseph, because Adam Cole is getting a pay-per-view main event in about, what, three weeks? Yeah. Two, three weeks? Two weeks. Against, 
Mr. Hangman Page for the AEW title. But you see, Mr. Joseph, I would just be quiet here before I get, I would, I would just be quiet here and move on before I get caught in AEW, before I get caught in AEW extremists and in an AEW nut hugger. I would just move on before, I would just move on before that happens. And I would just move on before that happens. But I thought this was a really good segment between these guys here, between these two guys here. And I love the detail in this here because they kept the camera. Notice how they kept the camera as Adam Cole was leaving. Notice how they kept the camera on Hangman Page in a way that they don't usually do. You know, usually when a guy leaves the ring, they they usually when a guy leaves the ring, they either show the guy going through the back, and they either show the guy going to the back, or they show the guy in the ring. In this case, they showed. Adam Cole, in this case, they showed Adam Cole and Hangman Page. They showed Adam Cole walking to the back and they showed Hangman Page in the ring. And I knew immediately, I knew as soon as Adam Cole said, we are going to do this man to man, I was yelling at the TV, bro. I was like, Hangman, I was like, Hangman, look out. Fish and O'Reilly are going to come out. And that's exactly what happened. Fish and O'Reilly came out, it was beat down there. Uh, also, you know, before the security guards came out, also the security guards, had, the security guards in wrestling had to be the worst group of security guards I've ever seen. I don't even know how they got in. I don't even know how they get employed. Bro. They had to be the worst security guards I have ever seen, bro. You ever notice that when a security guard comes out and they can't do shit about the two guys in the room fighting? You ever notice that they can't ever hold them back or detain them or get them down? No, they can't ever do that. You ever notice how they get? You ever notice how they always get thrown around? You ever notice how they always get thrown around? Security guards in wrestling have to be the worst security guards ever, man. If I was paying these guys, man, to watch my back, you know, to watch my back, man, you know, watch my back, you know, watch my back, I would have been attacked already, man. These security, the security guards in wrestling are absolutely terrible. But. Well, I means I thought this is a fantastic segment here. I, I thought this is really good. Sh- I thought this is really good shit between uh, between <laughs> Hangman, between Cole and Hangman. I much sure Revolution is going to be a banger. So, I'll, so I'm very much looking forward to it. I mean, security guards in wrestling get thrown around all the time. So it's like they're not even real security guards. But yeah, man, I loved the attention to detail at the end. They showed Adam Cole. They sh- They showed Adam Cole on the camera uh, for a little bit, and when the, the, he had a little bit, he had a smirk on his face, like he thought it was funny that he shook hands with Adam Page. And right then and there, I knew, right with you. I didn't scream to the TV, but I knew with you that uh, uh, someone was going to attack uh, Hangman Page. So the match is basically all but confirmed. Um, we're getting Adam Cole versus 10, Preston Vance, Friday night on Rampage. By the way, special start time, 7 o'clock. I love that, man. Get done at 8 o'clock. Get the review up by 9. Beautiful. Um, but, um, yeah, I think the match will be confirmed on Friday. If not, it's basically all but confirmed. But, yeah, and that match is going to be amazing. It's probably the match I'm looking forward to the most on the entire pay per view. So, um, continuing on, Chris Jericho and Jake Hager versus Santana and Ortiz with the Inner Circle imploding. imploding. This was a really fun tag team match. Um, Santana and Ortiz desperately needed this win. Eddie Kingston came out to a magnificent pop. To Eddie Kingston chance. I don't know about you, man. Does Eddie Kingston feel the he's the baby face in this feud with Jericho? I think he is. I think he is the baby face in this. I think he is the baby face in this field here. At least that's how I consider it. Because I just think Jericho sucks. So I've been rooting for it. Because uh, I, I don't think Jericho sucks. I think everything he's done so far uh, after the MJF feud has been shit. So I've been rooting for Eddie King. I've been rooting for Eddie Kingston since the start of this feud, man. <laughs> Yeah, it's just more people are on Eddie Kingston's side than Jericho's side. But this tag team match with Santana and Ortiz, really good stuff. Santana and Ortiz, 
Uh, they desperately needed this win going into um, this rivalry, and I'm really happy they got it. They deserve it. Chris Jericho put them over big time. He could have had. They could have had Jake Jake Hager taking the pinfall here, but it was Jericho taking the pin from Santana after a discus lariat, and they and he put over. Um, Santana and Ortiz in a really big way tonight. It's great to see it. And then after the match, Jericho immediately gets up and uh, tries to get with uh, Eddie Kingston. Security, I think it was security of the referees. I don't remember who it was. They pull apart um, Jericho and Kingston. And next week, uh, Cam, next week we're getting a face-to-face between those two. We'll probably get a match at Revolution. Chris Jericho versus Eddie Kingston. Uh, but I thought tonight's tag team match was really good. What would you think? I thought this was a really fun tag team match. Uh, I thought this was a really fun tag team match uh, between uh, these guys here, you know, between these guys here, or you know, between these guys here. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, Santana and Ortiz getting the win. Uh, Santana Ortiz getting the win was the right call. You know, that's the right call to make here. They desperately need this win. And I'm happy that it looks like, and I'm happy that the inner circle is finally done. Once that's where it looks like this is heading, or this better be heading in this place. I am extremely happy about that. Jericho and Kingston at Revolution should be good. So uh, I'm looking forward to it, man. I thought this is good stuff. Yep, absolutely. I think that, um, I think the pay-per-view will be all set and done. I think Santana and Ortiz cost Chris Jericho the match and it's over right there the faction is done and uh god damn it's been a long time coming so I'm kind of glad I'm kind of happy that um uh, I'm kind of glad that they're done so um moving on we had uh Mercedes Martinez and uh Thunder Rosa in a um in a no DQ match, uh, and these two ladies put on uh, this was a really fun no DQ match. The freaking spot, man! I cringed so hard. I don't know if you did, but they were both on the top rope, and Mercedes suplexed Thunder Rosa off the top rope, and Thunder Rosa was nearly crippled. I mean, did you, do you remember that spot? That I spot do. was. That oh, spot was freaking spot. scary, I, man. That was, that was very scary. I remember that spot. My God, that, that, that was nasty. So, Thunder Rosa gets to win with the Tiger Driver, or the Thunder Driver, whatever she calls her finisher. And she gets to win, and she's on to a feud with Britt Baker for the AEW Women's Championship, where after the match... But Baker comes out. I don't know who she went up to. I just some dude. I don't know his name. But oh, she's he's like, on. I forgot his name too, but I know he's on Cobra Kai. I, I cannot remember. I cannot remember his name right now. But he is on. But he is from Cobra Kai. And shout out to that guy from Cobra. And shout out to that guy from Cobra Kai. By the way, I, I, I don't remember. His, I don't remember his name. But he is a huge. But he is a huge wrestling fan, so I. So, but he is a huge wrestling fan, and if I'm and if I'm correct, I think I could be wrong on this. But if I'm correct, I think I don't know if it was in I don't know if it was Cobra Kai or it was another movie he was in. I think this was him. I think this was him. There was a scene. There was a scene in the movie where there was a scene in the movie where WWE was on the television, but he had that change. The show, but he had that change so that way it could be AEW on the television. I don't remember which movie it was from, but I think it was him. But I think it was him, and I thought that was great. Yeah, so I don't remember his name. I'll look it up later, I guess. But she says, "You got." He says, "You got to get her." So um, Thunder Rosa is getting attacked by all three of the uh, Rebel or Baker. And, um, um, God, what's it? Jamie Hader? My bad, I forgot her name for a second. But a, um, they attack 
Thunder Rosa, then that pipe that Mercedes Martinez had, Britt Baker gives it to Mercedes Martinez. And she kind of hesitates for a while, and she gets attacked by Jamie Hayter, and all three of them laid out Thunder Rosa and Mercedes Martinez. And my friend, we're off to the races with Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa, man. It's going to be a fun, it's going to be a good one, man. I'm telling you right now. But uh, is DMD's time over with that championship? I think it is. I think her time is over. I think her time is over as AW Women's Champion. I think it is time for the era of Thunder Rosa. I think it's Thunder Rosa's time. Yeah. We, we could be living in the era of Thunder Rosa. But, bro, I don't know what happened. Um, right after this match, right after the attack, there was an Amber Alert that went right onto my TV, and I missed the entire Malachi Black segment. And someone said Buddy Murphy, and I hear I'm seeing people saying Buddy Murphy is in the House of Black. I completely missed the entire segment. What happened? It, they didn't show him. Com- they didn't show him completely. They showed him covered up. But they, they showed him covered up, but, and, you know, they showed him covered up. But people think it's Buddy Murphy because of the report that Sean Rossep said, and then because of the report by Sean Rossep where he said, uh, Buddy Murphy is basically all elite. Buddy Murphy, Buddy Matthews, whatever the fuck you want to call him. He is basically all elite at this point. He is basically all elite at this point. If he hasn't signed the contract yet, he's come pretty, if he hasn't signed the contract yet, he's come pretty close. So, so, I mean, he's come pretty close. So the guy that so he was covered up, you know, so he was covered up. They didn't show him directly, but I, I could see him being revealed as Buddy Matthews next week. I could see that happening you know, when everything was on. Yeah, I don't know. I missed the entire segment, but now with maybe Buddy Matthews coming in the frame, there's a lot of possibilities you can do with this Malachi Black Death Triangle feud. Obviously. Um, we're getting uh, a tag team battle royal next week, and then on the dynamite after that, I think we're getting another battle royal. So it's going to be a triple threat match for the tag team titles at Revolution with Jurassic Express. Um, House of Black could easily be in that match, or again, we can obviously go the route of Pack and Malachi Black. Last week with Penta segment, they were teasing a match between Malachi Black and Penta. Or how about this? If Ray Phoenix is healed up in time, we got a six man with Death Triangle against the House of Black. But I obviously, if one of these matches happen, I think it's probably going to be Pack and Malachi Black. I agree with you. I, I, I agree with you. I can see. Excuse me. I agree with you. I, I could see the six man tag happening. Yeah, I could see that six man tag happening. But I think it's gonna be uh Pack and uh I think it's gonna be Pack and um fuck what's his name? Malachi. Pack and uh Black. Yep. So um Uh oh, he's muted. Sorry, I'm back. I have a car. I'm back. Oh, you're good. Don't worry about it. So, you were saying it's going to be Pat. You think it's going to be Pack and uh, Malachi Black? Yeah. Revolution. Yeah, I agree with you. So, I think that's the route they're going. And um, next week, I don't think they announced anything besides a tag team battle royal and a face off between Kingston and Jericho. Am I mistaken? Uh, you said they announced what? I think a tag team battle royal that determined one of the two teams and a face-off between Chris Jericho and Eddie Kingston. I think that's the only thing announced for next week. Uh, I think that's the only thing. Uh, I think that's the only thing announced next week too. Yeah, I'm not. We'll figure out more on Friday, but for Friday's rampage, we're getting uh Trent. Against Switchblade, Jay White, 
looking forward to that. Serena Deep's five minute rookie challenge on Rampage. Adam Cole one on one with Preston Vance and another face of the revolution qualifying match. This time it's in the Dante Martin team task feud as we get into the third match between Dante Martin and Powerhouse Hobbs. I'm kind of conflicted, man. Um, I want to see Dante Martin in the ladder match. I think him in a ladder match environment would be just insane. And the shit he can do in that match is going to be incredible. But at the same time, Hobbs really needs to win. And I think if he puts over Dante Martin twice in a row, I don't think that's a great look. I think he needs to go over. I would love to see Dante in the match, but I think Hobbs needs to go over. Are you with uh, me or are you opposite? I see your point there, but since this is a ladder match, uh, I'm hoping Dante Martin wins next week. Just because I think Dante Martin, let's be honest, I think Dante, uh, no disrespect to Will Hobbs at all, the dude is great, but I think Dante Martin in the ladder match sounds a lot more fun than Will Hobbs in the ladder match. That's just me. I think Dante Martin in the ladder match flying around because you know he's going to do some crazy shit. Sounds like a lot more fun than Will Hobbs in the locker room. So I personally will hope Dante Martin. I absolutely agree with you on that assessment, but it's um, who needs it more. That's what I feel it's more important. And at this instance, I feel like Hobbs, uh, he needs it way more than Dante Martin does, in my opinion. But hey, if Dante Martin wins, man, you're not going to get a peep out of me because I get to see Dante Martin in a ladder match in person, which is going to be special. So um, I do not care who wins that ladder match. So, but man, this main event, Sammy Guevara and Darby Allen for the TNT Championship, short and sweet, just like their first match. This match only went like 10 minutes, but my God, these guys put the, talking about the definition of putting your bodies on the line. These men put their bodies on the line, bro. The freaking spot, Sammy held Darby Allen up and he dropped Darby Allen on the top turnbuckle and bounced off like a basketball. And then you had, um, Darby Allen going for a suicide dive, and he dove right into a cutter on the outside from Sammy Guevara. And then Sammy Guevara does a springboard dive, and he lands on the apron back first. That was rough. I could feel it from watching it on my couch. That was rough, man. Hopefully Sammy's okay. But at the end of the match, I thought the match was awesome. It felt like the kind of stupid, the ending was kind of stupid. So they had Darby stand up on the top turnbuckle for like nearly two minutes. As Jose comes out, so Sting has to take care of him. And he's watching them brawl instead of hitting this coffin drop. That was kind of stupid, I agree. That was kind of stupid. Yeah, it's like, dude, just hit your coffin drop and win the match. He's watching Jose and Darby Allen brawl. But, um... This leads to Andrade coming out and hitting Darby Allen with the iPad. Sammy Guevara hits the GTH, retains the title after the match. You got Matt Hardy running right past Andrade, taking out Darby Allen. Sammy Guevara comes in, helps Darby Allen, and he gets smacked in the back of the head with the iPad. And Darby, and uh, at the end of the show. You got Andrade holding up both TNT titles that Sam Guevara has. And my friend, I think we're leaning towards a first time ever uh, triple threat match for a singles championship. I think. I could be wrong, but I think it's the first time we're getting a singles championship triple threat match at Revolution between Darby Allen, Sam Guevara, and Andrade. And if that's the case, man, talk about potential match of the night. That's a potential match of the night right there. But tonight's match, Darby Allen and Sammy Guevara, insane, man. 
What are your thoughts? Take us home. This will be the uh, yeah. Your thoughts. Uh, I thought this was a great match between these guys here. Just an absolutely insane match uh, between Sammy Guevara and Darby Alley here tonight. Uh, you know, just an absolutely insane match between these guys tonight. I enjoyed every minute of it. I thought this was really good. Uh, but I thought the ending was stupid. The ending is like some shit. The ending is like some shit we would see on Raw. Because uh, here, here's the thing about the ending. Uh, the, here's the thing about the ending I really didn't understand. You brought up a really good point about how Darby Allen was just sitting there on the top rope instead of hitting his finish. He was watching Sting brawl with Jose. Yeah. You know, that led to one try. They coming out and hitting him with the top. That was a really good point. My issue with this whole thing was the aftermath, man. I thought the aftermath, I thought the aftermath of this just came off really, really bad. First off, you have Sting down there. Matt, first, Matt Hardy comes down. He's beating the piss out of Darby Allen the whole time Sting is at ringside. And I'm thinking to myself, it's like, are you not? <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, are you not seeing what is happening to Darby Allen? Are you going to go in there? What you, like, are you going to go in there with your baseball bat and do something about this? It took Sting forever. For, it took him forever to get in the ring. That's the thing that, that's the thing that made me, that's the thing that pissed me off about this segment. Is that it took Sting forever to get in the ring. Darby Allen was being beat up by Matt Hardy, Andrade, Jose. I think the entire roster was out there, too. That's how long it took. <laughs> it felt like the entire roster was out there, too. That's how long it took Sting to finally make the save for Darby Allen. Uh, and by the way, I don't disrespect the Matt Hardy, but I have no interest in seeing Matt Hardy. I have no interest in seeing this getting turned into a fatal four way with Matt Hardy. I have no interest in seeing that at all. Keep this as a three way between Andrade, Darby, and Sammy. I have no interest in seeing Matt Hardy being added to the match at all. I just don't. I'm sorry. But I, I just don't. I'm sorry. But other than the ending, I thought this was really good shit. Yeah. I, again, I thought those endings we see on Raw, and I just wanted to point that out. But um, yeah, great main event. Seems like we're getting the triple threat match at the pay per view. I'm telling you right now, man. Not being biased because I'm going to a show, but the way this pay per view is shaping up, do you think Revolution could be AEW's best pay per view match card ever? Uh, it could. It could look like that. It could look. It could look like that. I think this or uh, full. I think full gear is still a tough one to top. I think full gear is still a tough one to top. But it, it could look like that. After all, man, yeah. I cannot wait for this pay per view, man. Oh, hey, let, oh, also, listen here, Tony Khan, uh, and Dynamite. Uh, I don't know, uh, Tony Khan, AW. I don't know what's taking you so long, man, but. I don't know what's taking y'all so long. But I hope y'all have, but y'all need to go. But I need y'all to announce that this show is in theaters again, man. I need to watch the show in theaters again, like I did full gear. Up so much fun. Yeah. No. I think it'll be announced soon. So it'll be announced soon. But, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for the review tonight. Thank you all so much for watching. Again, be sure to tune in tomorrow. As we make, as myself, Cameron Johnson, and Wesley Williams make our AEW All-Star selections in honor of the NBA All-Star Weekend and also Friday night, uh, the AEW Rampage Review was a special start time, 7 o'clock on Friday night, which means the review should be up around 9 o'clock on Friday night, which I absolutely love. And, um, yeah, thank you all for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, comment down below your favorite part of tonight's show, your thoughts on the show. Also, comment below if you are going to be in Orlando, Florida for Revolution in just two weeks, man. Literally cannot wait two weeks away. I Cam, I need these two weeks to fly, man. I need these two weeks to fly. I need to go to Rampage, Fan Fest, and the pay-per-view. I'm so excited, man. Like Hit the w like. dark elevation too don't forget i don't have an elevation i have a dark but yeah i have a dark on any night for rampage but uh hit the like button if you like what you heard from us follow me on twitter and instagram 
at Colin underscore Joseph. Cameron, plug your source. Uh, uh, well, you can follow me on Twitter at Cam71101. Uh, uh, you can follow me there. Also, if you also if you live in North Carolina and you're going to the MLW show uh, next weekend, hit me up. You know, hit me up. You know, hit me up. Let's have some. You know, hit me up. Let's have some fun. Uh, hit me up. Let's have some fun. So, uh, yeah, you can follow me there. And uh, check out the CNE podcast available on all platforms. And, yeah. Yes, sir. Be be sure to to uh, hit him up. And for if you're going to that uh, uh, MLW show in Charlotte next week, and uh, folks, thank you all for joining us so much. We'll see you tomorrow and Friday, back to back to back videos. Have a good night. Stay safe, and as always, stay classy. Hey, Joseph.